What's up, YouTube? Welcome back to Celio's Network. The Oceania International Championships 2020 has just commenced. That went on uh, this weekend, and we have our winners. We have our top eight results, and the LimitlessTCG.com has in a ton of the deck lists already. So today I am going to take a look at the top eight deck lists from the Masters Division of OCIC 2020. And of course, if you want the uh, exports, imports for PTCGO, Limitless has them right here on their site. So definitely go check that out. Before we get into looking at the lists, shout out to potownstore.com, your best place to get PTCGO codes. You can use code CELIO for 5% off. And FlipsideGaming.com, where I write free articles, and you can use code CELIO, all caps, for 10% off of your next order, $10 or more. So I think we'll go from bottom up, we'll go from 8th place to 1st place. And before doing this, I do want to note that um, the original 8th place was DQ'd. There was actually another Chinchino Mill in top 8, and they had uh, an egregious decklist error that resulted in them being DQ'd. So there was actually uh, two Chinchino Mill, two ADP Zacian, two Mewtwo Welder, an Ability Zard, and an Obstagoon in top eight. Uh, but instead of that, there was three ADP because uh, ninth place, who was Jack Millar, got bumped up to eighth. So we won't be looking at the second Chinchino Mill list since he technically did not get top eight. Uh, we'll be starting with Jack Millar, who did not actually get to play a top eight match. He was jumped. He was like uh, bumped up to the eighth place because of the DQ. But this is his list. So Zacian ADP, one of the decks that we all expected to do really well at OCIC, and it did do really well. There will be more on exactly how the decks performed and expectations and where to go from here tomorrow in my meta analysis video. Uh, but today we're looking at the deck lists. So Jack Millar's Zacian ADP list. Well, let's look at the Pokemon. So there's three Jirachi, three Zacian, two ADP, two Dedenne, and Mikyu, Mew, Absol, Fion. Um, looks fairly standard. Right off the bat, a few things I'm noticing is three Jirachi, two Dedenne, where I've seen a lot of people go with four Jirachi and one Dedenne. And I don't necessarily think one is more correct over the other. I think that could just be a deck building preference. Um, also, a lot of techs, and I think this was such a techie tournament, and there's a lot of techs that are really strong right now, so I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Um, Absol with the Dark Ambition, if your opponent's active Pokemon is a basic Pokemon, the its retreat cost is plus one more. Uh, that's really, really good. Mew is great. Uh to defend your bench against things like Picaram and the Ganadel GX. Fion's really good against Dolls and Obstagoon. And then Mimikyu's good against Mewtwo and Mew, which came in uh, multiple variants. So, uh, really strong techs that were seen in a lot of deck lists. And uh, although it is pretty teched out, I still think this list was fairly consistent. So, in the um, supporters, we only have four Professor's Research one Guzmahala and one Cynthia Caitlin. Um, so no Marnie. Marnie was very popular in ADP Zacian, uh, both before OCIC and during OCIC. So uh, this is actually something that's not standard. It's kind of surprising that there's four research and then a Guzmahala, Cynthia Caitlin, no Marnie, no Cynthia. Uh, that is definitely a bit surprising, and maybe those Marnies are where they found extra room for all of these techs at. Uh, Professor's Research is a very strong supporter, so seeing three to four of that in a lot of lists is not a big surprise. Uh, Cynthia Caitlin can be okay, but um, Cynthia Caitlin's not a very strong supporter, so um, I wonder if this was just there because they're also playing tag call. So Cynthia Caitlin is a nice out to a poor hand, but you have Zacian V's intrepid sword as an out to a poor hand. So a bit of a weird supporter lineup, but uh, let's move on for quick ball for metal saucer for switch for custom catcher. Everything there looks as it was expected to look. Um, a lot of lists chose to stick with the four custom catchers. Some people chose four Pokemon catchers. I think either is fine, and it is a preference 
on which ones you like if you prefer going for the high roll of getting more than two gust effects or only needing one card in your hand to catch her or if you'd like to play it safe and not have to flip a coin but you do have to find two custom catchers at a time like i already mentioned there's two tag calls uh there's two energy switch two reset stamp uh so those are all the two of items uh, two tag call. I've seen some lists with one. I think some people cut down to no tag calls. I think a couple Japanese players actually played three tag calls that I saw on Twitter. Um, the energy switch is very different. I know a lot of players did not think energy switch was worth it. Um, and this allows you to go for a turn one alter creation or a turn two alter creation after you didn't get an attachment down to ADP on turn one. So I do think energy switch is pretty cool. It'll be neat to see if more lists add it in the future or if we just completely lose the energy switches. <clears throat> uh, two reset stamps. Since you're not playing Marnie, I think you definitely need the two stamps uh, to have comeback potential and to be able to manipulate your opponent's hand. One great catcher in addition to the four custom catchers. Pretty standard. Then one escape board since they're playing four switches fine. The 1-1 one, one split on the Vitality Band and Big Charm. I think Big Charm's fairly good. It's just a it's a very solid tool. Nothing too special, but it can definitely save your Pokemon sometimes. And then Vitality Band uh, for when Zacian swing with Brave Blade after an altered creation, that's 260. Then Vitality Band goes up to 270. And with a Shrine of Punishment, 280. So you can potentially knock out two Mews and ADPs, which are very important. <clears throat> And for the energy, there are nine metal energy, two aurora energy, and one unit energy. Um, the unit energy, water, grass, fire. I want to say it's just there in case you're Guzma hollowing and you don't want to discard something with aurora energy. Because uh, other than that, aurora is always better than unit energy. Uh, but unit energy, I guess if you don't have something you want to discard... Uh, with uh, for attaching Aurora, you'd search out a unit. So that's actually a pretty unique inclusion, I'd say. Um, all in all, I think it's a solid list, and there's definitely some preferences, and I think we'll see as we move forward into other Zacian ADP lists, we'll see how other players chose to build their lists a little differently. Next, we've got Mewtwo Mew Welder. Um, this is... Uh, Nico and Tord's lists. So we won't have to look at both of theirs, but uh, Tord got seventh and Nico got first. They both played the same exact 60. And also, uh, Medi played it as well to a 41st place finish. So, uh, Mewtwo and Mew, I think uh, we'll click visual view here real quick to see all of these different attackers. Um, so, Mewtwo and Mew tag team with Welder is a deck that has been doing well since Worlds, and it did well again. It actually won the whole event. Um, so, you've got the Reshizard and the Charizard GX. In the past, there were some people cutting either one of these, but I think playing both is very good. They're playing both Naganadel GXs. The Stinger Naganadel is very important. Uh, you'll actually see that be used in multiple of Nico's streamed matches if you watch those back, as well as the Baby Blacephalon was used to win top four uh, with Fireworks Bomb. The Victini V is a new Pokemon, which uh, you can't copy it with Mewtwo and Mew, but its attack, which does 30 for each energy between Victini V and the defending Pokemon, actually gets used a lot over the course of the weekend if you watch the stream matches back in this deck and in the ability zard deck um so victini v definitely uh it, we knew it was a good card and i think people thought it would be put into things like uh welder snorlax decks and ability zards but i'm not sure if it was expected to be in mewtwo welder because you can't copy it with mewtwo but it turns out it's actually a very good two prize attacker in the deck um we also see that they stuck with the four Jirachi, three to Dene, just a ton of draw to make this deck pop off. Because this deck is so powerful, all you really need to do is make sure it gets its welders every game pretty much. Um, they also did add a fifth supporter, which is Professor's Research, and there is no Pal Pad in the deck, which uh, kind of surprises me. There's no Pal Pad, and there's no Mind Report Mute 2, which is very surprising. And then the energy lineup is a bit 
interesting with the two weakness guard, two psychic, three giant hearth, and no Viridian Forest. So you have to raw draw into one of those two psychic energy, which can be a bit scary in my opinion. Um, so that's the whole list from Nico and Tord. So that's the seventh place list and the first place list. Um, next we've got Ian Rob with his <clears throat> Asian ADP in sixth place. And his list is a little less teched out than um, the previous one we looked at. Let's just flash back to Jack Millar's list real quick. So Jack Millar, interestingly, did not play the Aran Guru that allows you to set the top of your deck, which I did not point out. Now looking at Ian Robs, uh, this is very useful to have multiple ADPs Asian decks to compare. Ian Rob did play the Aran Guru um, with Primate Wisdom. Uh, once during your turn, you may switch a card from your hand with the top card of your deck. Sorry, it wasn't popping up here over in the side, but now it is. Um, so yeah, very interesting to see uh, the 8th place list did not play this Aranguru, which has been pretty much a staple for ADP Zacian, and Ian Rob did, and then he also played the Fion. No Mimic you, no Mew, and no Absol. I do tend to like the Absol myself. And uh, like I mentioned when looking at Jack's list, he played the three Jirachi, two Dedenne. Ian plays the four Jirachi, one Dedenne, which currently I believe I have in my lists. Um, I just like the consistency of having more Jirachi starts. Uh, but not but prizing your one Dedenne can be scary if you need it to draw out of something. Um, so Ian is playing the three Marnie, which I mentioned. I like playing the Marnie and not having Professor's Research as your only real draw supporter. Um, let's see, we got the two Goose Mahala, no Cynthia Caitlin, which I think is fine. Four Quick Ball, four Saucer, four Switch, four Custom Catcher, three Tag Call uh, to get your ADPs and Goose Mahalas, which three Tag Call I think is a little overboard, but if it's consistent and it works well enough to get Ian in the top eight, then I think it has. Uh, some merit to playing the three tag call. I'd like to hear his opinion on if playing the third tag call was worth it or not. Uh, two reset stamp, a great catcher, and then also has the split of one board, one band, one big charm, and then one shrine of punishment, one Lysander Labs. Lysander Labs was a pretty cool tech to see um, to get around big charm, frying pan, spell tags. Uh, mess up your opponent trying to use their vitality ban, their escape board. Since you're only using one, it doesn't matter too much to you. So Lysander Labs is a pretty cool inclusion. And then the classic 9 metal, 3 Aurora energy. No fancy unit energy for Ian. Um, next we've got Burt Walters, also with ADP Zacian. So three of these decks to compare with today. Um, it looks like Burt went with the 3 Jirachi, 2 Dedenne split. He is playing the Mimikyu, the Absol, and the Fion. Let me just refresh this page and see if we can get... There we go. I'm not sure why that's happening. But uh, he's playing the Aranguru as well as Ian. Um, and then he's playing the Mimikyu, Absol, Fion like Jack did. So a nice mixture of the two lists that we previously looked at so far over there. And actually also in the trainers, playing four Professor's Research, only one Marnie, only one Guz Mahala, and playing a Cynthia Caitlin. Uh, going down this line of four ofs, it's exactly the same as the previous two. Four quick, four saucer, four switch, four custom catcher. Uh, down to two tag call in comparison to Ian's three. And the one great catcher. Two board and one band and no big charm. Uh, two shrine of punishments and one Lysander lab. So three stadiums, which is actually kind of a lot for Zacian decks as far as I've seen. And then... He's also rocking the unit energy grass water fire with the two Aurora and nine metal. So I'm taking a little less time with this third Zacian ADP deck since we've already looked at two others and just pointing out the differences. Um, so now we're on to Chinchino Mill from James Williams who got fourth place. And I believe this is very, very similar to this list that was circulating, the list I covered, uh, the list that came out from Japan on Twitter. Um, so if you want to learn more about this, I have a couple of videos talking about it on this channel. Um, I'll just see if there's anything terribly different. Uh, the One Chaotic Swell, I believe, may be a difference. Um, it, it may be a difference. I'd have to look, but uh, that may be something. I believe some lists were only playing three Crushing Hammer instead of four. 
Uh, so that may be something different. But other than that, this is the Chinchino mill that everybody expected. Nothing too fancy about it. Um, I... As far as how it did at the tournament, like I said, I'll have a meta analysis video up tomorrow for all of those kinds of things. Uh, but top four, I think, was really good for this deck. I didn't expect it to be able to win the tournament, uh, but I did say I wouldn't be surprised if there was one in top eight. Um, Tim Bartels next at third place with Obstagoon. And I think it's rightfully so called Obstagoon just because it's mostly focused on the Galarian Obstagoon and not really on the Sableye V or Evil Tall GX. There is one Sableye and one Evil Tall, but I think the strategy of this deck has evolved into being just obstruct and try to win that way. Um, so the 424 line of Galarian Obstagoon. Of course, Galarian Obstagoon has the Untamed Shout that can put three damage counters on one of your opponent's Pokemon, but it has the Obstruct Attack, Dark and Colorless for 90 damage during your opponent's next turn. Prevent all damage done to this Pokemon by basic by attacks from basic Pokemon, which walls off a ton of decks. Uh, the four Jirachi for consistency, one Sable IV because it's Crazy Claw's attack is very good when you're spreading some damage. Evil Tall GX because you can get a Doom Count out of nowhere after a Headbutt Tantrum and Untamed Shout. Verizian GX, I thought this one was kind of strange. Uh, we do see him use it on his streamed match in top four, and it doesn't really do much for him, but it's in there for the Breeze Away GX. Put any number of your Pokemon in play and all cards attached to them into your hand. So... In theory, you could have two Galarian Obstagoons on your board, and a Verizian GX, and then a bunch of other things. You use Breezeway to pick up everything but two Galarian Obstagoons. Your opponent knocks one of them out. You send up the other and just start obstructing with no bench. Um, and that's how you would win in that situation. But I'm not really sure uh, the merit of playing Verizian GX instead of just watching what you bench. Uh, then Mew and Mimic you for text. Bench Barrier is good against Pika Ram and uh, Naganadel. Mimic you is very, very good against Mute 2. Then for the trainers, something I see here that's different from some Obstagoon lists is that there is no Lily Polka Doll. Um, they're not really looking to wall behind anything. Just get that obstruct going and use that as your wall. Pretty heavy supporters, four Professor's Research, three Marnie, three Rosa, and one Bead. Uh, three Rosa. Rosa proved exceptionally valuable in my testing early on with the Obstagoon lists just because you can get so many important cards. You get your energy, you get your counter gain, and you get your Pokemon that you need to evolve or your rare candy in your Pokemon or your great catcher. Whatever it is, Rose is very, very good in this deck, so it makes a lot of sense that they played three. I do like the bead to get an energy down because Sable IV needs two energy to attack and Obstagoon needs two energy attack. You can use counter game with Obstagoon, but you can't with Sable Eye, so I do like the bead. And other than that, it looks pretty straightforward. Nine dark energy. Nothing too fancy other than those cards that I mentioned. Um, so the last deck we'll look at since... Nico, whose first place has the same exact list as Tord in seventh. The last one we'll look at is Zach Lesage's Abilities Art, or Reshi Ram Charizard Firebox, whichever you want to call it. I prefer calling it Abilities Art or AB's Art. Um, so, uh, an archetype that has pretty much solidified what it looks like in the past. Not much has changed. We got four Jirachi, three Dedenne, two two Ninetales, one Reshizard, and in the past lists have gone between zero to two Reshizard, one Heatran GX, which solidified itself as a Pokemon in this deck, the Victini Prism, which is very important, the Turtonator, which is very important, and the Megalop, which came in in Cosmic Eclipse. And it's still pretty good versus Mew decks and Pico Rom decks. One of the new cards, or the the only new Pokemon in this deck, is Victini V, uh, which was also new to the Mew two decks with the Energy Burst attack. Um, so Victini V proves as a very useful two prize attacker in this deck as well. One of the main things, if not the only things, that changed in the uh, trainer lineups for this deck now has Quick Ball. Um, so it doesn't have to use a mixture of Cherish Balls and Pokemon Communications. It can go four Quick Ball, three Pokemon Communication. This deck even played Friend Ball at one point when its Mirror Match was so popular, but it's nice to have Quick Ball for the deck. And also it has two Lucky Egg uh, 
I believe I didn't see Lucky Egg really help at all during the streamed matches that Zack played. I'll have to go watch them back, but I think Lucky Egg just seemed really weird in this deck. Um, I'd all, I'd rather play like a Ditto and a Zebstrika or a 1-1 Zebstrika line to like stamp or Marnie proof me if that's where the Lucky Egg was going, or even maybe a big charm for my Rushizard. Um, the Lucky Egg, I have to say, I just really don't get it. Um, but he did get the second place with this list, so I am curious to see if the Lucky Egg actually helped him at all. Maybe he'll talk about that in some future content. So that is the top eight lists. Like I said, the eighth place was originally Chinchino Mill and got DQ'd. So uh, this is Asian ADP list that we looked at got bumped up to eighth. And then Nico and Tord played the same exact 60. Nico was first place and Tord was seventh. This is all on LimitlessTCG.com. So be sure to go check that out. And you can get the exports for the decks by just clicking on the list and then click export to PTCGO. Uh, Limitless TCG is very fancy. It also has the prices for all the decks up there in blue as well. So um, if somehow you haven't heard about Limitless TCG by now, make sure you go there to get the exports for these lists. Uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like I said, I'll have a meta analysis for OCIC up very shortly, probably within 24 hours of you seeing this video. Um, and yeah, subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the content and want to see more in the future. I'll see you next time here on Celio's Network.